Chechere for ESA Web TV, and today we are here to discuss about the new Advisory Committee for Earth Observation. And with me are Martin Wiesbeck, Head of Physical Oceanography at GEOMAR and new Chair of the Advisory Committee, and Josef Aschbacher, ESA's Director of Earth Observation Programs. Now, let me start with a question for you, Josef. What exactly is the Advisory Committee for Earth Observation, and why did you decide to change the setup from the previous one? Okay, the uh, Advisory Committee for Earth Observation, as the name indicates, is really a committee uh, composed of the best scientists in Europe uh, in various disciplines, and they are uh, advising the Director of Earth Observation. So it is really an external, independent advice which I can get, uh, which I will use in the shaping of uh, the Earth Observation Program of ESA, uh, but also then bring this uh, advice, uh, which uh, may be formulated in recommendations or decisions for our member states on certain activities which are implemented. So it's a very important body, uh, and it is uh, giving me, I hope, the best possible uh, advice from the best people in Europe. Okay. And Martin, where do you see the main challenges for you and the board, and what do you expect from your new role? So to me, it's very exciting to be in this role because I think uh, Earth sciences, environmental sciences, tremendously benefit from space. Having said that, I think there's three dimensions that space can deliver in that realm. One is discovery. There's so many things on our planet that we haven't yet discovered, and space holds the key to many of them. It can break down barriers, it can break down walls, and really open up new ways to investigate, discover, understand how this planet works with all its functions. This could be the atmosphere, the land surface we live on, the ocean that I study, many elements. Also, space provides a wealth of information that allows us to track the Earth system as it's evolving. In particular, with humanity growing so much, its footprint on the environment, and all the dimension that has, again, space offers opportunity to track these changes, to put indicators, numbers out for the scientists to look at, but also for decision makers, for society to see what our actions are resulting in, or at times whether we want to you know, maybe reduce some of the pressures, see where the progress is, and look at the opportunities. But third, and that is to me the most exciting element, the ecosystem around space is changing. We have new opportunities about digital, about deep learning, about artificial intelligence, and how we can bring that into space. There's a whole new business ecosystem around us. It used to be just the engineers, the rocket, and the launchers, but now it's a whole ecosystem on the data, on the information that there is, and private actors entering in that space wanting to work with ESA. They need the backdrop, the background, the big players so like the space agencies, but they really, the roles and functions are shifting. So our committee is trying to give advice in these three areas on where a prosperous program can go, what the scientific questions are, but in particular where the opportunities are in innovation and in dealing with this new environment. So I'm quite looking forward to listen to the responses of ESA against these challenges. Okay. Now, you are working for one of the leading research institutions in oceanography in Germany and beyond. So when you look at the scientific challenges ahead, what are the pressing issues where you would expect answers from space? So for us, uh, the ocean, 71% of the planet, uh, certainly the advent of space observation for the first time made it possible to look at space sort of on a day-by-day -day basis. We used to be only go out by ships. Now we have space and robots together that really look into the whole water column. And what I'm looking for is more resolution, more specificity, because the questions that we're asking of the ocean's functions are, how is it changing? How is it supporting humanity? And a lot of activities happen in the coast where higher resolution in time and space is needed, but also that connectivity between in-situ possibilities and space possibilities into a full systems understanding. So I'm looking for an observing system which has space elements, in situ elements, citizen science elements, private sector elements, and taking all that information together so we can actually provide the information base upon which science can thrive, business can thrive, civil society can thrive, and decision making at our government levels can be supported by good evidence. So it's that new ecosystem that I really want to see how ESA is positioning itself in that ecosystem, and that's True for marine, very exciting space, lots of things happening there, overfishing, we need to control that, 
plastics coming in new dimension, climate change, sea level rise, all these dimensions, and space always has part of the answer, never the whole answer. So it's partnerships, which is key. And I'm looking for ESA to be a great partner in this global endeavor. All right. And Josef, how can ESA respond to these questions? Where can satellites help scientists and contribute to society? I think Martin was uh, saying it already. I think what, uh, uh, what can be done, and uh, this is uh, then also the role of ESA, satellites can bring a very essential part of the, of the information, not the whole information, not the whole solution, but a very essential part. So what can ESA do? ESA, the European Space Agency, can really agglomerate all these requirements, all these elements at European level, but also make sure that it all is well connected with the expertise within ESA, but also within the member states, and make sure that uh, monitoring the planet is done in the best possible way. And this uh, entails uh, within ESA a number of disciplines. It's the technology to build the best satellites in the world. Uh, it is the use of this data to establish a ground segment that is reliable, uh, where data are delivered to the user uh, in, a rel uh, in a very operational manner, but also the use of these data, so how these data are transformed into information. These are all the chains which we are covering. Uh, we also have uh, focused ourselves on uh, introducing innovation wherever necessary and wherever we can to make sure that whatever uh, technology we deliver, whatever data we deliver, that they are of the best standard. Uh, we, are, we are using new domain, we are applying new domains, uh, machine learning was mentioned, artificial intelligence, but also looking at small satellites, uh, high altitude pseudo satellites, so really uh, making sure that we, we have the best possible information and technology in order to address uh, the questions we have. And these questions are very simple ones. How can we monitor our planet? How can we protect our planet for the citizens, uh, for the people? And how can we make sure that Europe at large uh, can benefit from the use of our data in order to really make good use of it? So, Martin, there are several challenges ahead of you. With this in mind, what do you think the priorities of both you and the board will be? Well, I think our job is to advise ESA to really develop and select exciting space missions. I'm really looking for this great mission that all the member states say, yeah, that's what we need. That is really going to change the way we do business, science, discovery around the planet. So there are some great ideas around there, and our board will have the opportunity to look at all of them, and then we have to advise the agency to select just one or two of those ideas. This will be tough because we're going to negotiate and debate amongst the board because we're thinking, wow, I like this mission a lot, somebody like the other mission, so there will be a lot of discussions and debates around that. Second, we want to make sure that the innovation that is happening in the scientific world and the scientific missions finds its way into the more sustained missions around the Sentinels, about the Copernicus system, because these missions provide a lot of benefit to society in a very direct and lasting way. So that transition from the new technology, new ideas into that is something that we're going to look at. And third is engagement of the scientific community in the ESA capabilities, in the ESA data sets, in the ESA mission, in the ESA enterprise, and really also making ESA much more than just a single space agency, but really an information broker, an ecosystem where scientists of Europe think that's the go-to place. So our job is to really facilitate that and also do a little bit of advertising. We see ourselves as advisories for the program, but also as ambassadors for the good work that ESA is doing working out to the scientific community and to member states. And Josef, lastly, where do you think that these priorities from science, but also from society, will lead ESA's Earth observation programs in the future? Okay, let me start by saying that the ESA Earth observation program today is, uh, is going pretty well and is, uh, is a very good program, uh, I think one of the best in the world, and is delivering data, uh, I would say, at a state and at, at a quality which is excellent. Nevertheless, you should never rest and you should always improve. So where I really want to go, and this is uh, part of our new philosophy, new orientation of uh, the directorate, is to make sure that we stay on top of it, that we have the best program in the world, we remain to have the best program in 10 years, in 20 years. And now we need to set uh, the steps for this future. Uh, I would like to be uh, in charge of a program that is as inspirational as many other activities in space. Sometimes uh, politicians and the uh, general public are referring to uh, Mars exploration as being the step to do, or to smash a comet or an asteroid uh, to save the planet. And it's, it's exciting. It's uh, inspirational. It's very, uh, it's very uh, challenging. 
uh, I think uh, I would like to see that Earth observation can do the same and can raise the same excitement uh, as uh, other uh, domains in space are doing. Plus, of course, there's a huge uh, domain of, uh, of uh, work to be done to just know what happens on the planet. And this is a huge piece of work as well. So I think it has to be a mix of uh, the job we have to do in order to well understand our Earth system, but also to create this inspiration, this excitement uh, of politicians, uh, of the general public to, to say that, wow, this is so cool. I want to do Earth observation because now I understand how it works. Well, thank you so much. Thank you, Martin, and thank you, Josef, for your time with us today. This brings us to the end of this special edition of Earth from Space. And to all you viewers, thank you for having joined us, and have a very pleasant day. Mm -hmm.